Welcome, Dr. Jace Beckett, Sports Card Insights, here with Rich Klein. We're going to talk about what Rich calls magic years, where a team not necessarily comes out of nowhere, but in the case of the 62 Mets, they did come out of nowhere, but uh, teams that came out of whatever and had a very interesting season that people really want to commemorate with their collecting demand. So there's extra demand on certain teams in certain years. Rich and I are going to bat that around, but thanks Beckett Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication, ComC.com, Burbank Sports Cards, Mike Stadium Sports Cards, Heritage Auctions, Huggins Scott Auctions, and Tops, Panini, and Upper Deck. Most of this would probably be dealing with Tops as opposed to Upper Deck or Panini, but there, there are certain years or brands or situations for Upper Deck and Panini. But Tops, when they had the only game in town, then if you were a 68 Tiger fan, you wanted to get all the 68 Tigers even more so than getting a complete set. And I, I don't think that's unhealthy when people have a collecting focus. Not everybody can get a complete set. So that's a good example. I think to me, it's maybe one of the best examples of a magic year. So Rich, what's your well, take I, on uh, this uh, magic I year like aspect? The, I like we're starting on with Detroit. We, we, one of our previous chats, <clears throat> I think when we were on Hobby Hotline, we were talking about the active Detroit market at the time. So outstanding hobby city. Uh, really? And I, area. And I think one of the other things that makes 68 Tops Tigers so interesting is the last two series, the demand is such the cards are tough. And most of them have always been super popular. Maybe not Dick Trzuski the way some of the others were, but Rob Vera swears that the Joe Sparman number 505 is the toughest card for him to get in that set. You have the well-known Tigers team card. You have Mayo Smith. You have Gates Brown. Right. You have a bunch of popular guys, not the stars. The stars were already basically all cooked right. by that point. But you have popular parts of the 68 Tigers in those last two series. Yeah, but but Tops didn't put them in toward the end of the year because the Tigers were doing well. That's unlikely and, and maybe even physically impossible with the lead times they need. No, and, It and just fell that it, way. It fell that way. And that Bill Freehand's also in those last yeah, two series. Yeah. Again, it's, and you're right. Those were not people that got traded. They're not John Warden who, who wins three games in 60, right. in the first months of 68. Some of those guys for other teams that won games early in 68 or came out hot in the first month ended up in the high number series. Yeah. Warden doesn't. Warden would have been a really yeah. funny example to be that way. Well, he's a funny guy. When I went to my Hall of Fame fantasy camp in 2006, guess who the master ceremony was? Was it John Warden? The, the, and he said, stand up if you're undefeated. <laughs> Did he, and he's 3-0. and oh. Did he have his baseball encyclopedia with him? No. You know about his baseball encyclopedia. Every time he meets a major leaguer he never met before, oh. he has them sign their baseball oh, encyclopedia listing. Oh, that's, he's an amazing guy. He was just a, a funny guy, and he doesn't look like he could play anymore. But then, he didn't yeah, look like older. he could play then. If you look at his 69 top card, he's right. pudgy then. <laughs> okay. What about some others? Uh, the well, Mets in 62. To, but I want to talk about one of your teams. The okay. 60 Pirates. That was one of my teams, yeah. Clemente is your favorite player of all time. Yeah, yeah. I know you're a big fan of people like Bill Verdon. Yeah. Bill Verdon's actually part, and we'll t someday I'll have you talk about that, uh, the, the lawsuit, but this yep, is a different yep, story. Yep, yep. But I want to tell the story. We were at a White Plain show. No, I didn't see you at every single... I didn't travel with you at every single show, but I went... You came up to New York enough, I would a see A lot, you. yeah, yeah. This, this is in the 80s. This is in the 90s, after oh, I came oh. to work for you. Oh, okay. I'm at this table... I see a, the Pirates tag on game from 61. Oh, yeah. And the guy has it at the table. And I don't remember seeing it. And it's a hundred dollars, which to me, of course, is not something I want to really spend money on without checking with you. Yeah. And like, you come to the table, you see the game. It's your 60s Pirates. You acted like an eight year old kid seeing that <sighs> game. It was so much fun to see the excitement of you as a collector again. S looking for this item. It was just so pleasurable. Well, it was a, it was a 1960 item. Oh, was it really? It, it was either 60 or 61, I right. think. Yes. Because it was commemorating yes. uh, that. But it, they're not even cards, really. No. They're like decal sticker yeah. kind of thing. But things. they're cool. But they're artistic and interesting, but I don't... Uh, it's in a box. In, in, in it, the well, you room. bought it as a, you bought it in the no, original it, box. It's in a, well, it's in a, like a, a it's cardboard like a, yeah. kind of a It's like, in, a, it's like in the thing. game, but it was so much fun yeah. to see you. I have some other 1960 Pirates stuff. But again, for purpose of this episode, maybe the 60 Tops Pirate team set was too easy, other it than was. Clemente. So I didn't worry about that. I had the whole set. But there were other items, other memorabilia kinds of things that I had. But See, for you, the 60 Pirates were a magic team. Maybe yeah. not card-wise, but it was a magic team. It was you. a magic year, but yeah. 
But the Tigers were a magic team for so many people in Detroit. And for cards. And for cards. Yeah. And 84, the next time they won a World Series, was also a magic yeah. year. And one of the reasons it was a magic year for 84, it again brought the city together. The memories yeah. of 68 were fresh. Right. And 84, Donruss Tigers were not the easiest thing to find. Right. There was not as many 84 Donruss out there. That was a scarce wax in 84. You couldn't just go and find 84 Donruss anywhere. So people were actively bidding for 84 Donruss. We talk about the dollar boxes and things like that, nine boxes, five dollar boxes, whatever. A lot of the people that dig through those, I'm pretty agnostic as to team. As you said, you've outed me now as a 60 Pirates fan. <laughs> but a lot of the people that go through those boxes are looking for their team. And there's some amazing tough cards in there that are low demand. But if you're a collector of that team or that year, for example, if you went through a dollar box and you found some 62 Tops Mets, or maybe even Colt 45s, or you might pick them up. But you wouldn't expect the Colt 45s, because we're in Dallas, that's too close to Houston. But Mets, and maybe the, the word's out with the Mets, that they're extra demand. Well, 62 Mets are interesting because until the last two series, there were no cards of any Mets in a Mets uniform. Yeah. You only have three cards in the set where people are actually wearing Mets uniforms on the card, one of which isn't really even technically a Mets card. <laughs> It's Don Zimmer, and he's traded to the Reds, and the cards show him in a Mets uniform, <laughs> Cincinnati Reds. If I'm a team collector Reds, I need that card. If I'm a Mets collector, I need that card. Plus, Zimmer is such a fun character. This is before your time, the 55 Dodgers. That's For huge, sure yes. was a big one. If I think of what are the bigger magic years. So 55 was a magic year for anybody in Brooklyn because they'd waited so long. And I always saw extra demand for 55 Bowman and 55 Tops, Dodgers, any Dodgers. 55 Tops, you also have on top of it that Hodges and Snyder are in the high number yeah. series in 55 Tops. So they're tougher anyway. They're tougher anyway. They're significantly tougher and then good luck. I don't see those cards very much. It shows even to this day. What about 69 Mets? 69 Mets, it's a, 69 you would think is a lot more accessible than 55. Yeah. 69 Mets, you don't see a ton of. There are certain people in 69 Mets that are just tough cards. I, I think Tommy Agee was a po more popular lower series card. Kuzman is never centered very well. Jerry Grody was tough for me as a kid getting in the packs. And then you have Seaver. He's not a super hard card, but you still have Seaver. And then you have... A couple other cards. I think Tug McGraw is like number 601, and that's always been a super popular card. People would put those cards, that card away even before his son ended up being a country music star. Rich, you mentioned 57 Braves, Milwaukee Braves 57. Explain that to me because that's the first World Series I remember seeing on TV, and, and it was a blurry I, picture, I, but I'm just trying to – I don't see that much other than a reverse negative Aaron – what, I there's think that part much of it interest was in the 57 that Braves we'll, cards. we'll call them our competitors at Krause. Yeah. Oh, they were all, the and so they all, huh. when they started, they all collected the 57 Braves. So there was always extra interest okay. in 57 Braves for the hobby population that Red Sports Collectors Digest because they collected it themselves. Yeah, that just points out that when we were doing price guides, the hobby was a lot more regional than it is now. And the Krause guys were doing some of the same stuff. And if most of your input is coming from the Midwest or the upper Midwest, we made a concerted effort to get to both coasts and all over the place to try to remove any regional uh, biases or at least understand them. But like you say, if you, you go to Milwaukee, you're going to see a lot of increased prices on Packers and, and Brewers now uh, and old time Braves. Brewers were huge. When the first time I ever did a national, I brought all my Brewers with me when I set up with Mel Solomon in 83. And okay. there was somebody in Milwaukee that had just had a, their store had just had fire and they wanted to replace the stock. By the time I finished with them on Wednesday night, I had made all my money for the show. I didn't, the check covered everything. I covered all okay. my expenses. Then Friday became found money. So then spend or did you put it in your... It was in my hidden... checking. It was a check. Uh -oh. So I couldn't even spend that. I had to spend cash I picked up at the show. Okay. Here's my memory that, that I'm now revising because we've gone back and forth on this. I think... I know the first time, I th my memory is the first time I met you, you were at Mel Solomon's table. That's probably correct. So it could have been 83 National. I was thinking it was one of the Paul Gallagher shows. It, it could have been one of those shows, but... Which could have been even earlier. You could have met me, but I'll stick with the formal introduction as the 84 yeah. softball field. The formal, hi, how are you? Welcome. Here's my name. Welcome to the batter's box. Right. Uh, I just, I, I know that happened. But I just thought something happened. You've probably that, so. seen me before without putting two and two together is my name. No, I just I remember having an extended conversation with uh, Mel and that maybe you were there. It's, and I was I there. Just, and I that's probably a, what it is. I just have a, a memory. I, I bought some stuff from Mel back a long, long time. We all bought time. stuff from Mel back yeah. then. <laughs> he dug up a lot of stuff in those yeah. days. What Any others? Because it just seems to me now when there's so many. I, I love the fact that there are people that collect 
according to a certain team. And then again, they would be excited about the debut year of the team or the world championship year of the team. But is it more than that? I think today there's too much diversity to really focus on getting all the cards of a team in a certain year. You mean by brands? Yes. Or parallels, brands, even sometimes players. There's all sorts of things that when a market gets more complicated, sometimes you don't want to be as involved in it. Sometimes there's something about a simpler market. Okay. I have another concept I'm working on for a future podcast, but I'll just tease it here with you, is that I believe, and there are other podcasts that are dealing with this, Card Ladder notably, talking about the market cap, which is the number of cards that are out there times the value, the current value, and you get like a market cap of a company. But they're slicing it by that card in that condition, in that grade, actually. It's mainly a graded kind of thing. And I think you could do, you could broaden that concept to the market cap of 68 Tigers or 55 Dodgers. If you wanted, not that you're going to corner the market, but what's the value of all the 68 Tigers that are out there in regardless of any condition? Whatever it is, if you go to 2020 and pick any team and try to think, and like Ben Wilson, trying to get all the A's, and I think he tries to stay with just base cards and not all these rainbow parallels. He does a lot of rainbow parallels. Then he's, he's I'm just saying, when you do the math, the market cap, or the, the, the you add it all up, it's a lot of money. That's that's why that's I discouraging that's why for all of, but the, speaking of Ben, he when the Maguire Sosa got hot, he has an accumulation of over six hundred eighty seven tops Maguires. I always said, Ben, sell those now, fund your collection, buy them back. You don't need six hundred. You keep ten or twenty or thirty, use that money, and that way you're not spending money out of a paycheck or out of whatever you do. Problem? You're trying to make an economic argument to an economist. <laughs> <laughs> and point. he sees you coming. I believe that this is one of the, again, we shouldn't talk about somebody in here, but this is something where Ben is on an emotional level. He it's is. not an economic argument. He yes. might agree with you. I he should do that, does. but he's not going to. Oh, no, you're right. And I think, Ben, go for 700. He is, by the way. I think he's almost there. He is almost there. And there's been a value creep. Yes. That the ones he bought a long time ago are more. I'm happy when people get the last laugh. But again, that's a magic team for him, not a magic yes. year. It's a magic player for him and a magic, yes. Uh, what, you know, the other thing that's come up is like the first appearance in a brand or it, we're talking about firsts and it's like a rookie card, but the, there's no big deal about the first Astros cards as opposed to the first Colt 45 cards. It's just the franchise started. It's like, no, it's, it's more like an Ozzy Smith and 82 tops traded. Yeah. That's his, his first, first Cardinals Cardinal. card. And right. that's well delineated as the first Cardinals card. 79. Burger King Pete Rose was the first Phillies, Phillies card. Pete Rose card after 16 years as a red. Yeah, I grant you that. Yeah, the whole thing breaks down into supply and demand. And when you have a, the demand is whatever it is. We don't always know exactly what it is. But if you add a little bit of extra, or pardon me, supply is what it is. We don't always know exactly. But when you add a little extra demand based on some of these magic years or any other consideration, for example, if you had a bunch of 68s and they were organized by team, you'd probably look for the Tigers. You see, because you would know in your, the way you sell cards, that those would be the most saleable team. Yankees are faded glory by then. The Mets, you obviously check to see if Ryan is there and Seaver. But other than that, you know, I also, check for, card, I also check for Tommy Agee. That's a tough eye number. Or yeah, tough last, yeah, that's the last yeah. series card. Basically, I believe there is a concept of magic years. Uh, thanks for bringing it to our attention, Rich. I, 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 think, th- I think we can do one out of two of these teams. If you would like us to do it in detail, we'll be happy yeah, to do yeah, yeah. some team in detail. That some one of these teams we mentioned or others right. in detail, just so you can dis- so we can have fun discussing it. I agree, but I'm trying to make the distinction between the concept and the herd. The concept is if you see a team or a year that you want to focus on, go for it. But if everybody else is going for it, it's really going to distort the pricing out of shape because all this extra demand is going to come on that fact. So again, thanks, Rich. Thanks, listeners. We'll be back again tomorrow with another episode.